Hello. In this video, we'll be looking at Redwood's Run My Jobs workload automation with a complex chain demonstration. The demonstration scenario consists of the following steps. Firstly, we'll open up an existing process chain. We'll then look at how the advanced calendaring creates one version of the truth, so you can mix and match based on the calendar what is easy you want to run. We'll then discover how error handling routines are set up and how you can then integrate any potential workload automation errors into ServiceNow. And finally, we'll monitor the results. So let's have a look at the solution in action. This is our landing page for the Run My Job solution and it gives us an overview and a health check as to the process service queues and any activity that needs attention. But what we are going to do is just go and have a look at a predefined process chain. And we do that by going into this tab here and opening up this process chain. So we just do a right click edit. This will take us into the process editor. Now this is the 64,000 foot view of our end-to-end -end chain and the operation takes place from left to right. So we'll just zoom in a little bit. So as we can see here, we've got a series of activities that are running in parallel and then they're daisy chained across from the left to the right. If we just zoom in a little bit further, we can see we've got a whole bunch of activities. Now, what we're interested in here is looking at what we call these status handlers. And these dictate what happens if in the event that something untoward occurs in the automation process. And what we can see looking at the right hand side in the properties panel is it's saying if any one of these processes errors, then what I want to do is then follow the path of the red line. So in this case, if it errors, it's going to go to step nine and we'll have a look at step nine in a few minutes. If none of these error, then it will then flow through into step two and step three, etc. If we now move across to this part of the screen, we'll see we've got some advanced calendaring options. Now in the first option we have here, this is saying that whenever all these jobs get submitted, I want you to bring in the appropriate reports on a daily basis. And now what we're looking at is if we just expand this one here, we can say what I want to do is actually run this only based upon a certain precondition. And in this instance, we're saying this is called a month end reporting. And in the properties panel on the right hand side, we're saying when the system month end calendar is open, then I want you to run this particular activity. And the same thing we've got below it. So if you do quarter end, we'll see the time window then become system quarter end. And the year end then is the end of Q4. So this means that it will only run at that appropriate time. So if it's not applicable, then what we will find is that these steps will just get skipped over. Now, if we just move the view slightly further across, we can see we've got a, another status handle definition here. And this one's highlighted in blue. And what this is saying is saying, if in the event that this process doesn't work properly first time, I actually want you to run a maximum number of four times to rerun it. And if in the event the rerun fails, then we can send it to the end of the process chain and take any appropriate action. But if in the example, sometimes you find that maybe a script doesn't work properly first time, second time or third time, it's okay. And then it will just carry on. Now, an important step we've got at step six, because this is performing a file transfer option, is we're actually going to ping the server for the, uh, the target of the, uh, of the file transfer. And like a lot of other steps, we're saying if in the event that this step fails, then what I want to do is let's have a look at the status handler. That's going to take me once again to step nine, which is over on the right hand side, which we can go and look at now. So it's going to perform all these activities. And we can now look in a bit more detail at step nine. So if we look at the step before it, if all the activities work okay, 
what will happen is it will flow through from left to right and then it will actually send an email notification to a target recipient or recipients to say that everything's worked okay and then it will skip to the end of the chain and flag everything as being okay. If in the event as we saw earlier there were some activities that failed it would go straight to step nine missing out step eight and then perform two operations the first of which will be creation of a ticket within ServiceNow. The second of all will be a belt and braces approach that will say also send an email to a list of recipients or recipients to let them know something's gone wrong. So watch the workload flow through from left to right. I'm just going to zoom out to give us the, the helicopter view again because what we have got also is a critical path view that we can look and how things are going. So what we can see is this is giving us an indication as to those processes that take the longest to operate. So we can see that, for example, there could be that process there and there that take a little bit longer than normal to run. So we can just keep a track on those. And you can actually just follow the workload through. And if we move over to the far right hand side, you'll see on average it takes one minute and three seconds to actually run this operation. So what we'll do, we'll actually just cancel out of this and submit the workload. So if I now do a right click submit, so first of all, it's prompted me saying, what's the SAP system that I want to run on? And what's the, the SAP client ID um, number? And then if in the event that anything fails, who do you want to send an email to or generate a ServiceNow ticket on behalf of? And in this case, it's actually picked off the submitting user ID. So let's click next. As we looked at in the previous example, we can apply very powerful coloring techniques, but I just want to run this now. Click on next, and then the default queue, this means that basically the system queue will sort out exactly where each process is going to run. And then finally, I actually want to monitor this process in the diagram. So we'll click on submit. So we'll now see, we've got the green banner there to say the process has been successfully submitted. And we've now got the view that we can actually do a refresh on, or you can actually set automate a refresh if you want. But I'll just click on refresh and we should see some of the workload has now already executed. That's in the green. And then it's going through various staging techniques. And now we should find that the workload will now go through. And if you remember, it was around here. This is where we had our daily, monthly, quarterly and year end calendars applied. So we'll click refresh and we can see that those processes have actually been skipped because it's not that time uh, in our calendar period. Uh, so it's executing now those other processes. Once they're done, it will then carry on and perform the workload. And we'll now see that that process we had that was actually the ping operation of the target server has failed. So it's actually skipped all the processes of the file transfer operation that we're going to perform because there's no point. And it's gone straight to the end. So we can now zoom in and just have a little bit of a closer look. And we'll see that it's actually performed two operations. We'll click on refresh. And we should see that, first of all, it's generated a ServiceNow ticket. And secondly, it sent an email as well. And finally, we've ended up in a, a frowny face uh, to let us know that the, the workload hasn't completed successfully. So to verify that's the case, we can now go to our ServiceNow instance. We can click on refresh and we'll see we actually have got an incident that's raised that's saying source servers down. So it's actually passed the information as part of the trouble ticket generation. And of course, it's also sent the email to the recipient specified. Thanks for watching. For more information on Run My Jobs, visit redwood.com.